Hi, this is Tom Stokel, Global Technical Lead for AutoCAD Product Support, and welcome to this session on troubleshooting common installation problems. This won't be an exhaustive list of issues that you may encounter during product installation, but I'll focus on the most common issues that we see in product support. I'll describe some typical causes for these problems and then solutions that have worked for us in the past in resolving these issues. Before we get into that, I want to talk about how to optimize for a good installation. These are just some best practices to help ensure a successful installation. The first thing you should do is make sure that the computer that you're installing to meets the minimum system requirements. If your system doesn't meet these requirements, problems can occur both within AutoCAD and at an operating system level. This also includes confirming the required version of Internet Explorer. For the 2011 products, we require Internet Explorer 7 or later. Next, you should confirm permissions. To install AutoCAD, you must have administrator permissions. If you don't have administrative privileges, then you can't install anything to the workstation. And sometimes Windows will show you an error asking you to log in as an admin. Turn off any antivirus or anti-spyware programs that are running. Many of these programs can cause problems with installation. Antivirus especially does real-time checks of files that are being written and read from the hard drive. And one of the common problems is that they tend to block the administrative privileges and can cause the installation to fail. So close them before you start installing. Before you install, close all active applications that may be running. The installation process can stop if some applications, such as Microsoft Outlook, are running. So close all running applications to avoid any possible installation problems. If you have a previous installation and you're no longer using it, it's a good idea to clean the installation first. This will remove any problems that may occur because of the previous installation. This is especially important if you participated in beta testing. If you have beta software on your system, you definitely want to uninstall all of that and remove any entries in the registry related to the beta product before you install a final version. One common way to troubleshoot AutoCAD problems is to run the software in safe mode. Unfortunately, this method of troubleshooting doesn't always work with newer versions of software because the necessary Autodesk licensing services don't load in safe mode. In this situation, the best troubleshooting alternative is to use msconfig to restart the Windows system in a state similar to safe mode, but with the licensing services running. So to get into diagnostic mode, from your start menu, if you're in Windows XP, just click Run, or you can do a start search if you're in Vista or Windows 7. And then in the uh, Run dialog, enter msconfig. This will launch the System Configuration Utility. On the General tab, you want to select the Diagnostic Startup option. And then you want to go to the Services tab and select the Autodesk Licensing Service option. For a 2010 products or later, you also want to select the FlexNet Licensing Service. Then just click OK and restart Windows into Diagnostic Mode. In order to get back to a normal Windows startup, again, you'd go through the same process of launching msconfig, and then on the General tab, just select the Normal Startup option. Then click OK and Restart Windows, and it'll bring Windows back into its normal startup mode. A good source of information when there are problems are the installation log files. Most of the products create one or more installation logs, and they're typically created in the temp folder on the client workstation. If you installed from a deployment, the creation of this log file was optional, so it needs to be enabled when creating the deployment administrative image. If you want more information, you can enable the Windows installer logging and get a more detailed log file. There are details on how to do this here at the Microsoft website at this Knowledge Base article, and we also cover it in our own Autodesk Knowledge Base. Once enabled, these log files are created in the temp directory and are typically named msi and some series of numbers.log. And these can provide more detailed information when the MSI installer is run. One of the most common errors is a 1603, fatal error during installation. 1603 errors are typically related to permissions problems. One of the solutions is to check the Microsoft Knowledge Base article that you see listed here. And that gives a lot of detailed information about uh, how to address any permissions-related problems. 
If that does not correct the problem, try logging into the machine using the local system administrator account. This will be the default admin account that installs with the operating system. Stop all antivirus and spyware services and verify that the processes are not listed as running in the task manager. Then browse to the system temp folder and delete the contents. The temp folder tends to be a dumping ground for installers that run and need to extract files before running an installation. Deleting the contents of the temp folder can help avoid any possible conflicts with older install files. And after that, retry your installation. The 1603 error is not an Autodesk error. This is a Microsoft error that's being reported. And as such, these kind of errors tend to be difficult to diagnose because they're somewhat vague and they don't give you a lot of information. Another error is the 1606, could not access network location. 1606 is often seen when the secondary installer runs, and it's usually related to problems with the registry key properly finding the installed directory. This was corrected in AutoCAD 2010. You can also get a 1606 error when installing from a deployment. This often happens when a deployment image was moved from one server to another after creation. To fix this, you can edit the INI file in the admin image location and change the server names so it accurately reflects the new location of the admin image. You can also get this error when you've specified custom content paths incorrectly. Similar to that, we also see this error when modifying existing deployment images and editing the support content folders. For more information, here's another Microsoft Knowledge Base article on this particular error. Next up are 1402 or 1406 errors. You typically see these errors during the installation of a product, and the error will either pop up in a message dialog box, or you'll see the error listed in the installation log. The cause for this error is usually that the installer can't write to a particular key in the registry, and typically this is due to a permissions issue. To solve this, first document the exact message so you know exactly what key in the registry is causing the issue. Then go into the registry using regedit, locate that specific key in the registry, right click on it and choose permissions. Then choose add and we suggest you choose the everyone option. There's more detailed information about this at our knowledge base. Sometimes you'll see a message pop up that says error, unhandled exception has occurred in your application. You usually will receive this error during product installation and typically it refers to a just-in-time or a JIT error and often the installation log will include an error referring to just-in-time or JIT. A JIT error often indicates a possible corruption in the Microsoft.NET framework. So here's some things you can try. First close all programs and then from the control panel, one at a time, try uninstalling all versions, hotfixes, and service packs related to the Microsoft.NET framework. After you have uninstalled all those versions, restart your machine, and then download and install the Microsoft.NET framework 3.5 only. After that installation is complete, you can attempt to reinstall the Autodesk product. Sometimes you'll see activation problems. This is after a product has already been installed and you're attempting to activate it and having problems. Once you've verified the obvious things, like verifying the correct serial number, you could try forcing a product activation. The way you do this is to delete the existing activation information to force an activation. Activation information is stored in the trusted storage data file. This file stores activation information for all Autodesk products 2010 and later. This file will have a name similar to this, ADSK Flex, some numbers, dot data. You can find this file in the following folders. If you're on XP, it'll be in Documents and Settings, All Users, Application Data, FlexNet. If you're on Vista or Windows 7, it'll be in C, Program Data, FlexNet. So you can try deleting this file and then see if the activation problem goes away. It's important to note that deleting this file removes activation for all installed 2010 or later products. So you only want to do this as a last resort. The issue is that if you're only having an activation problem with one of your products, deleting this file is going to remove activation for all of the products. And each product will have to be reactivated. So you really only want to use this as a last resort. If you're having profile issues, you can try triggering the secondary installer. To force the secondary installer to run, 
log onto the computer as that user, go into the registry using regedit, and browse to the following subkey and delete it. H key current user, software, Autodesk, and then the name of the product. Be very careful with that. You only want to do this in H key current user. You'll find a similar entry in other areas in the registry, like H key local machine. You don't want to delete that. Only this location in H key current user. Then you can open up Explorer and locate and delete the following user folders. On XP, it'll be Documents and Settings, Username, Application Data, Autodesk, and then the product name. You also want to go into Local Settings, Application Data, Autodesk, and the product name, and delete that folder. If you're on Vista or Windows 7, it's going to be under C Users, the Username, App Data, Roaming, Autodesk. And you also want to delete C users, username, app data, local, Autodesk. Once you've done that, then restart the product. That should kick off the secondary installer that will recreate the registry keys and the files that were deleted. Finally, let me take a moment to talk about imaging software. So imaging software is a method for creating master images of a drive that contain Autodesk products. Uh, the most common example of imaging software is Norton Ghost. The master images are then restored to other computers. This is used by educational customers all the time when they need to restore machines to a base configuration. The thing to be careful of when using imaging software is that it can cause problems. The use of imaging software can result in the following situations. Sometimes it'll introduce conflicts with product licensing or incomplete installations and problems with activation. Machines that are using a SATA RAID configuration can also experience problems with activation. Specific instructions on using imaging software is well documented in the Autodesk Help. Look for the section titled Distributing an Autodesk Program and follow those instructions carefully. They give detailed information about certain switches that you may need to use when you're creating your master image and details around the proper way to activate products that are going to be distributed using imaging software. Obviously, it wasn't possible for me to cover all possible scenarios you might encounter related to installation. But I hope that by highlighting the most common issues that we see, you feel a little bit better prepared to solve these problems when you encounter them. I can't guarantee that all of the solutions I talked about will solve every problem in every situation. Because there are a lot of variables related to product installation. From permissions, to the computers that's being used, to the product that's being installed. If you have installation problems that are different than what was covered here, or if the solution details I gave didn't work in your scenario, I recommend you refer to our knowledge base for more information. Until next time, thanks for watching.